Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Wake Up Missoula. My name is Noelle McFoy, and, and that was Scott a lovely Ramp. intro by... Scott Ramp. Yes, and uh, it's Monday, it's Memorial Day week, and today is Memorial Day, so Asaf Adonai has the morning off. So that was a lovely intro. Uh, but we hope you guys all had a great weekend. I know I definitely did, and I'm tired today because of it. But it's Monday morning, and uh, we're going to kick off with some weather. So let's talk a little bit about the weather. Yeah. It is currently 45 degrees outside. It's looking beautiful as heck. And of course, it, today is the perfect day to wear some uh, red, white, and blue. And of course, the mixture of that is orange, which reminds me, it's a nice day to hang back and just have a nice amber, nice orange amber beer to enjoy your, your Memorial Day. And there's a bunch of just wonderful things going on today besides uh, programming here on MCAT as well. There is, yes. And so uh, tell us a little bit about this program and on MCAT today. There's a whole bunch of programs. Um, there's the, um, they, they discuss the Disclosed Act. And of course today it's all about, there's a lot of like politics mm -hmm. today, especially um, on tonight's uh, program on MCAT starting at around like five or so. Um, it's uh, put on by the League of Women Voters. Nice. They had a panel a couple weeks ago. We did a nice live stream of that. And, uh, and then, of course, tomorrow we have the uh, second uh, episode of our ongoing series of the Southwest Asia Conference. Nice, yep. Mm -hmm. But with uh, a couple of other things as well. Sweet. But, so wow. without further ado, let's... Uh, let's we'll show you guys what up. we got. Yeah. This is, and, of course, it's the memorial... Uh, it's, memor it's a police memorial day for all... It's to honor all the police officers that uh, have fallen in the line of duty this, just this past year. Awesome. Mike Hebert, Corporal Paul Kelly, Officer Randy Crastell, Officer Jeff Lloyd, Officer Mike Cameron, and Officer Caitlin Sargent displayed exceptional bravery, professionalism, and a commitment to our citizens and community during a very stressful and traumatic response for assistance. We honor them tonight with the Missoula Police Department's Police Medal. So there's a tremendous amount of work Commissioner's Office in finding the original sufficiency decision, a tremendous amount of work on Mr. Jerusi's part to prepare and present this case to the jury along with Sarah Arnold and all the witnesses who came in and testified. All of that's important. Then you've got this 12-person jury. It, and were you there when they were picked? No. Okay. It's, it, it's baffling to me how you could find 12 people in Helena, Montana who knew less about politics. So as you know, we are addressing the impact of political parties on the race for the presidency. We'll move through a brief orientation about the process from the perspective of an elections official, then we'll go to a short history lesson, and then we will turn to our panelists, our two party leaders, and the four delegates who will share their experiences and their expertise. To link this to, to myself and how I see things, I, many of my colleague writers in Morocco who write in French, uh, some of them never set foot in France. So for them, there is a Moroccan French. It's part of the Moroccan landscape. It's part of who they are. It has nothing to do with colonizing, colonizing or... And so when I was walking out of the infirmary, I saw a fellow in a powder blue jumpsuit. So I remember, dark blue general ward, white jumpsuit, sex offenders, orange jumpsuit, high value detainees, uh, gray jumpsuit, disabled ward, green jumpsuit, greater, greater liberty, greater mobility, so I walk up to the guy in the, in the powder blue jumpsuit and I said, sir, excuse me, can you tell me what? All right, you guys. So you can find out all of those on channel 189 today and tomorrow. But we are going to hop right into our events. So we're going to switch my camera angle to a shot just on me. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, so you guys, uh, today is Memorial Day. And so instead of giving you the events that are going to go on around Missoula, I'm just going to give you the Memorial Day events. And so, uh, starting at 9 a.m., there. So, what it says in this page is that due to the uh, due to the age of the honor and color guards and the number of veteran monuments they visit uh, today, they are not going to be having formal ceremonies and keynote speakers as they have in the past years. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So, instead of doing that, 
they are just going to get on a, a bus. They're going to get on the bus at about 9.15, it looks like. And so it says there's no specific times except for the start of the procession. The start of the procession starts at the VFW headquarters, 245 West Main Street. And uh, that'll be at 9.15. So the Honor and Color Guards board the charter bus. And then the general public can follow the bus in their own vehicles. And so they'll drive around to all the different memorial stops. And at each stop, they will um, walk up to the Veteran Monument or Overlook. They'll put wreaths and flowers at each location. Um, and then a prayer will be spoken. And so that will be, let's see, they'll also perform the three valley shooting of their rifles, commonly known as the 21 gun salute. And the procession will walk slowly back to the charter bus in formation. Um, and so they'll do that at each monument, it looks like. Um, and then, yeah, and so then at 1 o'clock, they are going to have the actual Memorial Day celebration, or the ceremony that'll be at the University of Montana. And so it'll take place at the Fallen Soldier Memorial. And, and they're going to be honoring one of the 43 of Montana's fallen soldiers and their recent military campaign campaigns overseas. So Antonio Tony C. Burnside of the Blackfeet Nation. Um, and so they're going to be honoring him for his service and his sacrifice in 2012 when he was killed in action. Uh, and so some of the other memorials where they are going to today. They're going to be going to, it looks like, so Karis Park with the Toss of the Wreath in Clark Fork River. They're going to be doing the Missoula County uh, Courthouse Ceremony. They are going to go out to Fort Missoula. They're going to do Western Montana State Veterans Cemetery, a Sunset Memorial for lunch and a break. And then they're going to go to Missoula City Cemetery. They're going to go to St. Mary's Annex Cemetery. Uh, yeah, St. Mary's Cemetery Rose Memorial Garden Park, of course. And then they will also go to University of Montana, Iraq, Afghanistan, Fallen Soldier Memorial, where all they will have the ceremony. Um, and so Beach Transportation will be providing the buses, so they just want to give out a shout out to that. And thank you very much for busing around all of our honor and color guards and our veterans to celebrate today. Uh, so happy Memorial Day, everyone. And thank you to all of our veterans and everyone that has protected our country and served over the years. But I know that uh, that's what I've got going on on Monday. We're not going to switch gears because Scott is introducing a new segment. So I'm going to let it take him from here. Well, it's a brand new segment. I like to call this Tales from the Weekend. So I got inspired. You know, there's homework for Bulmer. And I always say, like, a synopsis from a story. Why don't I just give a whole entire story? But, of course, it falls more on the lines <coughs> of Bulmark. So it's an original story by Scott. So I have a nice little sheet here to read from. So I'm going to prop this up, try to play, and tell a story. Oh, how do you do that? Here, get that out of the way. All right, are you guys ready for my story? Yes. Tales from the Week. I can't wait. The story begins with a nice soft melody because I cannot express funky on the piano yet. <laughs> Introducing our strong female protagonist is Nancy the Cake. She's a strong, independent slice of cake who believes that if women earn 75% 70 of what men make, then everything that women should buy should be 75% of ticket price. We begin our tale with a little known fact that Nancy the Cake Fray came from a whole cake whose frosting was tough but fierce. Fierce but tough. Soft but not. <laughs> Life for Nancy the Cake was never easy, but luckily for her, her strong female inspiration came from the the billboard across the street. The advertisement for a woman's shoe impacted and influenced her for years to come. And just a side note, in cake time, years usually consist of hours. <laughs> as years passed, Nancy the cake was forgotten. But she never forgot what it means to be a strong, independent woman. The billboard changed, and the only glimpse Nancy got of the new billboard was now from the dumpster in the alleyway. It has seemed that Nancy was about to be yesterday's news. But just then, a black cat appeared. The cat was lean, perhaps a little too lean, but anyways, came upon Nancy. It was clear Nancy's days were numbered. The cat couldn't reach Nancy the cake, but it, would, but it was too weak to jump upon the dumpster. Just then, Nancy threw herself in front of the cake and said, let me be the strength to carry you for a day or two, as you may need my strength more than I do. 
As the cat ate Nancy the cake, the billboard revealed the phrase which influenced Nancy for this kind act. And the moral of the story is, if you are only fed little bits of knowledge your whole life, does that not help you carry on for a day or two? Or maybe ask yourself why the main character in the story is a talking cake. <laughs> the end. Scott, that was lovely. <laughs> that was uh, Tales from the Weekend. And I would give my own Tales from the Weekend, but I don't know if it's morning show appropriate. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Scott. I love that. That was great. Isn't you guys, isn't he a great piano player? I had no idea. He's been playing the piano lately, and both Asaph and I have been like, oh my god, Scott, we had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of nice, yeah. But that, uh, Tales from the Weekend, we are going to switch gears now. And I've got events for Tuesday. So, this is what's going on in your community tomorrow. Uh, starting at 7 a.m. over at Alpine Phys... <coughs> Sorry, you guys, excuse me. Uh, starting at 7 a.m. over at Alpine Physical Therapy is their Strength and Conditioning with Core Align class. Um, and so you can improve your balance, posture, and functional movements while strengthening your core and conditioning. <clears throat> and then, um, yeah, it's, so it's pretty much designed for fit individuals of all fitness levels. And then if you're already super fit, then it'll help you, uh, strength, you know, improve your strength and help protect yourself from injuries. But if you're not super fit, this will help you get there. So this next class is kind of interesting. It's called Kanga Training. It's at the Ula Studio. It starts at 10 a.m. And so it's a complete workout during which both cardiovascular endurance, flexibility, and muscular capacity and strength are enhanced. But it's for moms and you can have your child on you as you do it. So pretty much you can like, instead of having to look for a babysitter or just like put them to the side, you know, like have them chill while you exercise, you can, I think, strap them on you. And then do this exercise. So it's like, yeah, babies are worn on them and get to be a part of the action. So as well as physical activity, uh, you can also meet other moms. That's kind of nice. That's good. It boosts moms' emotional well-being. Because moms do a lot. Especially, yeah. So that's great. So it's $10 per class or 10 classes for $80. Ula Studio starts at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Over at the Children's Museum of Missoula is an art series that starts at 11. Uh, at the In the Alps boardroom in the Florence building, they've got Shooting the Bull Toastmasters. It starts at noon. This is a lively Toastmasters club where you can improve your public speaking and uh, increase your confidence and, you know, and grow your vocabulary. <clears throat> Over the Lifelong Learning Center, they've got Computer Fundamentals. It starts at 1. Uh, topics are going to include hardware, software, operating systems, internet, email, security, and file and management. Over the Learning Center at Red Willow, we've got our Yoga Warriors at 4 o'clock. It starts tomorrow. Uh, this is So this is yoga free to veterans, their families, and caregivers. It's a specific yoga program designed for veterans, um, and, it, and it's to help lower anxiety and help with sleeping problems. Out in Lolo, uh, at, their, at their school and their library, they've got a reading activity for little ones for ages 3 to 6. It starts at 4 p.m. Uh, and then over in Frenchtown in their library, they've got their Lego club that starts at 4, that goes until 6. Over at DraftWorks, they've got Cheers for Charity at 5. This is a benefit um, to benefit back, benefit a nonprofit in the local Missoula, Montana area. So 50 cents from each beer and 25 cents from every root beer and ginger ale sold between 5 and closing during the event uh, goes to the nonprofit. At the Lifelong Learning Center, they've got a cute little class. It's uh, Basics of Pet Grooming. So uh, it'll teach pet owners proper grooming methods for your pet's fur coat. Yeah, that starts at six. Uh, also at six at the Top Hat Lounge is the Picking Circle. This is for bluegrass-oriented musicians to go out there and jam out. Uh, and then once again at six o'clock is uh, traditional Irish music with the Crashers and Friends. That'll be an Imagination Brewing Company. Uh, and then over at the public library, also at 6, lots of things going on at 6 p.m. tomorrow, is a community creative writing workshop. This is the drop-in environment focused on the creative writing workshop process. That's from 6 to 7.30. Uh, over at the public library, so we're sticking there, they've got their system check that starts at 6.30. This is the official gamers club for ages 19 and under. They have video games, board games, card games, all the games that you could want. 
at the Good Food Store, they've got a cooking class. It's a hands-on pizza. Starts at 6.30 and it's only $35. And then we've got uh, some active classes. So there's African dance class at the Missoula Senior Center at 7. $10 per class or $35 for four classes. Ula is at the Barn Movement Studio at 7. Um, and then over at the Roots Acro Sports Center, we've got Adult TNT at 7.30. So this is for ages uh, 16 and up. It's only $8 to drop in. So if you want to do gymnastics or fly around or jump on trampolines into foam pits, uh, Tuesday nights are your time. And we've got two music things. So the Missoula Music Showcase is going to be at the Badlander at 9. And then uh, the Rattle Trap with New Old Future and Carnes is going to be at the VFW at 9 p.m. Uh, the Rattle Trap is from South Dakota, and they're uh, touring in support of their new album, Baby D Meets Pale Norse. So it's folk-tinged indie rock with a bite. Nice. So that's what's going on in your community, you guys. You can check out MissoulaEvents.net, University of Montana website, The Independent, or The Missoulian for more events. I actually also just found a new website where you can find events. It's called Destination Missoula. And, you know, it's basically all about Missoula, but I'll show you guys. And so you can find events on here, and you can find about and things to do, where to stay, plan your visit, connect with Missoula. Which, you know, we live here, so we already kind of know all this. But it's another good place to just see what's going on. Like, there's featured upcoming events. Um, <clears throat> so DestinationMissoula.org is also a resource where you can go to find out more events. Cool. Yeah. It's a little... That's Thanks, Scott. Super cool. Yeah, I know. I'm feeling a little lonely up here. I feel kind of like naked just doing without yourself. you. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like la la la. Play my piano. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but um, if you guys want to find out more information about us, you can check us out. We've got our own website wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula you can like Wake Up Missoula on Facebook you can also follow us on Twitter I got this next one you can also follow MCAT on Twitter at MCAT TV Missoula you can also like us on our Facebook page and you can also go to our website MCAT MCAT.org MCAT.org To find out more information about us and We're yeah. looking for new guests to come on our show and talk about all sorts of wonderful things they got going on in this community that we live in We really month. are, yeah, all Which, the time Yep, yeah, just call us at 542-6228 Otherwise known as 542-MCAT Yeah um, But what did you do this weekend, Scott? I, uh, I'm hanging with my cousin. Okay. Yep, she's, uh, she's our nanny for, um, my little niece. Nice. And sometimes nephew, depends upon if, you know, their grandma uh -huh. doesn't want to look after him. And, um, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, we hung out. We, uh, we went to, uh, around the, we went to the downtown scene and enjoyed some stuff. And uh, I learned a couple things about, like, uh, dancing in the middle of crowds is that it's just everybody get, gets up in your grill. It's never a bad time to mosh pit to get them out of your way. It's very true. I do that often. Yes, when I dance and people are, get all about me, I like to mosh. Elbows out, mosh. Yeah, and I'm pretty small. So, like, in, in concerts, like, people really just, like, shove me around. Well, like, it's not, that's not the dancers that are the problem. It's the people who are trying to get through the dancers. Yeah. It's like, can you just go around? Yeah. Yeah. They don't. They literally have to go right through everybody. It's, it's like, true. I want to stand right here, makes me a better dancer. It's like, mm hmm. It's very I'm true. Sure it does. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, suffice to say, yep. well, we were out late and yeah, we just uh, had a nice good, good old time. And then, of course, Saturday night I didn't do anything. And of course, Saturday, uh, MCAT did live stream mm -hmm. Missoula, the Hellgate Roller Girls, a very own roller derby for a full contact female sport. So they do that. They always have looking for volunteers annually. So if you're looking in to get involved with that, you're more than likely to. So, yeah. And of course, on our MCAT Facebook page, we have a video. So oh, great. Video. So we uh, live streamed it. And of course, we shared it to our Facebook page. So you guys can check that out. Yes, you, just you can. Just go to our Facebook page. And there's a video oh, like, right at page. the very top um, of it. Ooh, let me get to it, and you, you guys. can show a little bit of that. We don't necessarily need to show audio. You just so, have the idea. So, here's our Facebook page. And, of course, it, it usually does only, like, the, it did, like, an hour and a half of it. Uh-huh. And then it just didn't, like, then it just cut off after a certain point. But. Yeah. And so we'll, we'll hop around for you guys.
So you kind of get the idea. The whole the whole idea is that the person who has a star on their head is called a jammer, mm -hmm. and they're supposed to get past the crowd. And if they get past everyone, that's five points. And so every every time that they pass around the main crowd, they get five points. And that's for both jammers on either side. So basically, they're the ball, and they make as many points as as they circle around the groups. They really do. And this is such a fun sport to watch. Like, I myself really don't totally understand it uh, 100%. But it's still really fun to watch. It's fun to watch them just, like, crash into each other and fall. And these girls are pretty tough. Yeah, and, of course, the Helgi Oral girls beat British Columbia's Bavarian Barbarians, um, I believe it was like three hundred to like twenty-three. It was uh, it was three hundred sixty-nine to forty. So we really Insane. annihilated them. But I did talk to one of the Hellgate Roller Girls after the bout, and she said that the Barbarian Barbarians did not have their full team. They had to borrow four or five other girls that weren't regular to their team. So that, of course, throws everything off. That totally throws your yeah. vibe off. Throws your whole team thing off. Um, and I'm sure the Hellgate Roller Girls, like, they lost to British Columbia last year. Mm -hmm. And um, I, actually, it was, yeah, Vancouver, um, British Columbia, they lost to them pretty badly. Yep. And, yeah, that's probably the worst thing a lot of cities can do is when they start um, separating into, like, multiple teams. Yep. Because yeah. I know that Billings had a really solid team for the longest time, but then they decided to um, split up their team to, like, two or three different teams. And then that's, yeah, you kind of lose the whole synergy of your team, your whole vibe, you know, you're all got to be on the same level and work together. And if you don't have your normal members, yeah, I totally understand how it would be hard to, uh, yeah. Yeah, some, that. some players are um, better, uh, you know, blockers, some are better scorers. And it seemed mm -hmm. as though that um, Helgi Roller Girls had a solid defense and they, they did not let any of the, the barbarians through no but it was a good match not. it was solid it was a good nice bout for the first season and of course you guys can check that out this saturday is the uh, co-ed yeah this saturday will be pretty fun it's a co-ed so they're co-dead and they're from seattle and so they've got men and women on their team um and so that'll be interesting that'll be interesting to see how that plays out and to see their and see you know, as we heard from friday as we heard from heidi the other day there is no nothing different they've still got the same rules same rules still apply so i just hope that the those guys are women enough to man up <laughs> women up. <laughs> yeah, women up. Yeah, women up. Some of the, uh, well, the Helgi Hellions are the like the junior league. Yes. And of course, they they have a couple boys on their team, and a mm -hmm. couple of the boys like really tall and really big. I'm just like, oh, there's those poor girls, and then like the the, the the really tall boys that you thought would be like, oh no, they're gonna hurt the girls, and no, it was, no they it don't. Was the complete opposite. The only enemy of the boys were the floor. Yes. <laughs> yeah. If I were the boys, I'd be more scared. But what I thought was interesting, um, it's interesting to watch the junior league, and then as well well as the like the professional league because the juniors are very they scream a lot and they flail a lot and they fall a lot this is chaos yeah whereas the older ones uh they're a little more controlled as you guys can see right here they're see, a little more controlled see how, they, how the defense grabbed each other mm-hmm yep like they, they, it's like uh extreme um red rover red rover pretty much yeah and so the people with the stars on their helmet are the point scorers uh, yeah, I, I would honestly say that roller derby is a, lot, is a lot like moving Red Rover. Yeah. Is that where you could, um, you know, you let your friends through and you clothesline your enemies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's pretty fun. It's a fun sport to watch, though. It's a fun sport to film. I had a lot of fun filming it. Yeah. Just a lot going on, and there was there was a couple of great hits and great crashes. Yep. But there was no serious injuries, so. No, no serious injuries. Yeah, a couple crashes. A couple of the junior league girls, they had to uh, sit out for a few minutes. And when someone gets injured, everyone goes down on their knees. Everyone just like stops and goes down on their knees, and then you just all wait until the injured girl like you know gets fixed again. Uh, so it's cool, and it's really neat. They also, I was pretty impressed with their cleanup. They clean that place up like super fast. I know they were so fast about cleaning up. They yeah. almost beat us cleaning up. Which yeah, is they almost beat us cleaning up. It takes yeah. us about like 15, 20 minutes to clean up our stuff, but of course, setting up takes forever. Yep. I bet they were out of there in 30 minutes. I was impressed. Yeah. Was, yeah, it looks pretty good. Nice quality. Yep. Yep. And of course, you'll see like the full version. Of course, we only got the first hour and a half of the live stream. So you guys will get the whole entire thing on our YouTube channel, MCAT Television, someday. 
I, I'm going to plan on putting it up there on Tuesday. So look <laughs> Someday, on everyone. Tuesday, sometime on Tuesday, and then I'll share it to everybody, and everyone will give you a good time. And, of course, uh, on Friday, I shot the uh, – so um, this is on our uh, – on Final Cut Pro. Mm -hmm. so, oh yes. So check. It's uh, under the Tuba Choir. It should be under. Um, it, it's a different tab altogether. A different event. So if you look up Tuba. Yep. And of course, I got a chance to go to the Break Espresso, and this is the uh, Tuba and Euphonium Choir, and you can pretty much put it in anywhere. Nice. All I right. Would, I wouldn't start at the beginning because they don't play until like maybe like a minute or so. You can probably start like right in the middle while they're playing. Okay, you guys. But this is a, a, oh, a, it's thirty minutes long. Okay. Yeah. So th this is a little taste of it, and of course they're going to Tennessee to do a tuba and choir uh, symposium. Cool. So hopefully this is... it has something to do with pavilions, because I'm game. So he, without further ado, here is Ben Kirby and their uh, tuba and euphorium choir from Missoula, Montana. <laughs> tuba music. Scott knows all about that. Scott's a tuba star, for sure. Yeah, but you know, the, the break espresso is acoustic, so like, oh, it's always loud. And there's a couple songs in there where just like, um, excuse me, uh, barista, can you uh, make me the loudest drink? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys, I think that's our show for today. Uh, thanks for tuning in with us. On Wednesday, we will be back to normal. We'll have all of our regular cast. Asaph will be here. Scott will be here. I will be here. And I'll be good again. Yes. But thanks for tuning in with in with us. Uh, for Wake Up Missoula, my name is Noel McFoy. And I'm Scott Ramp. Have a good day, everyone. Out. We'll see you Wednesday.